Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Mario. Welcome to my podcast, Testimonios Escondidos, or Hidden Testimonies. I'm going to give you a treat today. I'm going to give you an episode in English. But for those who are now listening to this for the first time in your mother tongue, that being English, the purpose of this podcast is for those who want to share a hidden testimony of theirs and how God has done something miraculous or marvelous in your life. If you would like to be a guest on my podcast and you speak English o en español, o habla español, uh, find me on uh, social media, go to my Instagram, testimonios underscore escondidos, Find me, give me a follow, message me, and I will surely look if it's God's will and you believe you have a strong testimony to share with the world that you would be featured on a future episode of mine. So do follow me there. And wow, it is so much easier to do a podcast in English than, than it is in Spanish. As you all know, the first two episodes, I had a pilot episode and an episode two. Uh, where it was all in Spanish, and that really is my target market. I really do want to just do episodes in Spanish, but I also want to share it in English, too, because I have a lot of followers on my social media that says they would love to hear these hidden testimonies, but there's no way they can understand it because they only speak English. So... Uh, I'm going to try to dedicate some episodes for sure, especially if it's a powerful testimony of mine personally, um, so I can share it in English, and then um, you, the world can be double-blessed, I guess, <laughs> so we can have those who speak Spanish hear that podcast, and those who speak English hear that podcast, and we'll kind of go from there. But before we get started, uh, I just got these bad boys here. I have the um, wireless go-to attached to this, and these little extenders were only $29, and I thought this was way easier and way cooler looking to hold than it was a kitchen knife. <laughs> so if you saw in the other episodes, I had these connected to a knife. Someone commented on, on my last two episodes and says the knife represents that I've got a weapon in hand against the enemy and that I'm always in always ready to fight the battle against against uh, the enemy Satan there so I thought that was adorable but man this I got to tell you this is way way easier so this is the way I'm going to be going sorry to disappoint where do I want to go from here obviously I want to thank those who have listened to the podcast up to this point here um, your feedback is very important to me. Uh, obviously, my first two episodes were in Spanish. Uh, my Spanish is not my first language. Well, kind of. So it was technically my first language. When I got to kindergarten, got bullied because I couldn't understand them, I decided to abandon the Spanish language, convinced my mom that she should not speak to me in Spanish at all regretted it, and had to basically relearn the whole language over again at the age of 25. So for the past eight years, I have been learning, 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 still learning each and every day. And, you know, I'm at the point, thank, thanks be to God, that I can communicate my thoughts, be in debates, ask questions, do interviews, um, you know, uh, translate, you know, pretty comfortably now you know, be dropped off. If I was dropped off tomorrow in Mexico or Honduras or any Spanish-speaking country, I could easily survive. So it really is a blessing that um, God has allowed me that opportunity to go through that. And I know when I have children, um, I am not going to have them go through that suffering that I went through and feel that shame and and guilt of not learning the language, refusing to learn it, and just waiting at such a late age to finally get serious and learn it. So anyways, that's neither here nor there. Today's going to be an English episode, so it's going to be way easier to do, way easier to recount the testimony that I have to bring for you all today. 
And if you've listened to episode two, I talked about the title is, When I Had Nothing, God Opened Up the Heavens Over Me. And that that episode was obviously in Spanish, but uh, today I'm going to be reciting that wonderful testimony now in English. And where I want to start is back in 2012. 2012 was when I started going to the Apostolic Church in Maryville, and under the leadership of still the same pastor, Brother Carpenter, I remember when I started going there, it was in February. Now, I don't know if he's still doing this now, but he said that every February he dedicates the four Wednesday services to only talk about one topic and to teach the congregation the importance of giving tithes and offerings. And I was very fortunate to be a part of that. Now, at the time, I was working at a bank, and so I got to see a lot of people's accounts, those who were in the church, those who weren't in the church, and I had a dream that I wanted to become rich. So to ask someone with a dream who wants to become a rich that you should give 10% of your income to the church kind of sounded preposterous to me. Not something that I was really in agreement with, but when I started going to those Bible studies, one thing that really stuck out to me was what was pulled out of the book of Malachi when God asked the Levites that if you will try me in this, speaking about giving their offerings, watch me, watch that I won't just open up the floodgates of heaven and a blessing will pour up will pour up out up about on you, will pour over you that your storehouses shall not have enough room to hold it. And I remember that something pricked me that I should really maybe kind of take this seriously. And so I remember making that decision at the young age of 22 that I would start doing ties. I still didn't quite understand offerings, but In this video, I'm going to be talking about tithes, and yes, I do understand this can be a controversial topic. I know it can be debated that is tithe still applicable to this dispensation of grace, or was this something just under the law of Moses? And this video really isn't for that. I just want to share a testimony of how God revealed it to me. Again, just my personal account, why I believe tithes and offering is important and is still necessary. And I just have a testimony that I need to share that I just can't ignore how God has provided for me. And I do believe it was due to to the results and my good habits of always tithing. So I remember I started tithing. After going through those four weeks, those four Wednesdays, four different lessons about tithings, it really pricked my heart and said, you know what? I'm going to really take God up on this. I'm going to try Him in this. Now, while I do understand tithes is controversial because, yes, are there pastors out there that have abused this privilege that the people have to give to the church and have used it for their own gain, or twisted scripture to say that if you will just give a dollar to this ministry or to the church, watch how God will give you two dollars, right? Or just another way to become rich. Uh, That's something I I completely am against. It's totally a false doctrine. But what I'm talking about when I say tithes, I'm talking about bringing your your first, and giving it and honoring to God. And I'm going to say something here that I wouldn't say is biblical, but I really like what this pastor said. He said, I would rather live on 90% income being blessed than have 100% of my own income and it being cursed. Take it for what you want, but I really enjoy that, and that's something that resonated with me. And while I don't, while I will say that is not biblical, okay, 
I think the concept behind it makes sense to always just give God your first, okay? Because you know, we have a we have a ministry to support here on earth, whatever church you're called to. It's got to be supported and and God we say, well, God will provide, God will provide. Yes, he will, and he'll use you to help provide. And we know God's the the owner of of gold and silver, and if he wanted to, he could drop a million dollars into any bank account, but God doesn't work like that. God would rather see the faith of a few people giving into him and allowing him to multiply that. That's what I believe, and that's what I've seen tithes do over and over in my life. But the testimony that I really want to bring today starts shortly after I started tithing. Now, I had been doing that pretty consistently for about three years, and I remember finding myself just starting my photography business, and I was working a couple of different jobs. I was working at Walmart. I was starting my photography business. I, you know, tried to start my own business as well, selling energy drinks through a company called Verve and Vima. I was also the head audio and video guy, tech coordinator for a hotel in Knoxville. I was I was working a bunch of like side jobs. I didn't really have like one main job that I dedicated to. But at that time, I had lived I was living in Knoxville with one of my friends, Courtney. She's a girl. I had no relationship with her, but we decided to get an apartment together, and I, I moved in with her. And I remember during that time that I was literally working just to survive. I remember that where I lived, it was 45 minutes away from my job. I would have to get up at 3.30 in the morning every morning to make it to work by 4.30 in, in Alcoa to work the Walmart shift, and it'd be from 4.30 to 1.30, come back home and do it all over again. And I wasn't making really a lot of money there. Photography was bringing in very little bit at the time. Again, I was kind of just starting getting my feet wet. I'd maybe been in it about a year, and gigs would come up here and there. And I remember that, you know, just paying rent and food and gas was basically taking up all my Walmart check. And I remember one day finding myself and, and, and realizing that payday wasn't going to be until next week, I realized that I looked at my bank account on my app, and I remember only having $26.50 in my account. And I remember thinking that afternoon, I said, and I, and I only had half a tank of gas, and I remember saying, how am I going to go to work tomorrow. I don't get paid till next week. And on top of that, I've got food I need to buy. I'm literally going to be broke. It was the first time in my life that I got to the point where I was broke, broke. Like, I am broke. Again, $26.50 is not going to do anything. I was deciding whether I should fill up my gas and go hungry or eat and not and not have any gas to go to ch- to go to work to the next day but i remember in that moment actually just pleading to god i said god just please provide for me please provide for me lord i i i desperately need you to provide and in that moment i the name stephanie popped up in my mind and who stephanie was was uh, a friend that I had um, in my past that was getting engaged and was eventually going to get married, and she chose me. She reached out to me to do her engagement pictures with her now husband, Jake, but at the time, just her fiancé. And I remember it was February, and her wedding wasn't until, like, end of April, beginning of May, so it was still about two and a half, three months away before that event was going to happen. 
And I remember thinking, you know, I need to follow up with her because we haven't gone over the contract that I've got written up for her to do her wedding. So I remember calling her up and I said, hey, Steph, um, I'm just reaching out to you here, you know, wondering when you and I can get together and talk about, you know, this contract here. It's very important that we go over the details, make sure we're all on the same page, you know, how much it's going to be. And, you know, when does that work for you? You know what she does? She literally responds and says, okay, great. We can do that. Um, how about you come tonight? I'm, I'm in town, right? And now she, she lived in Nashville or Charlotte, one of the two. I can't remember. But she was in town that week. And she says, hey, why don't you come by my parents' house? We'll all sit down and we'll go over this. And I said, great, let's do that. And I remember, what did I just say? I had $26.50 in my account, and I was I was pondering whether I would be able to go to work or have food tomorrow, the next day. Well, to make things even more complicated, she lived 45 minutes away from me. So, no, an hour away from me. She didn't live anywhere close to me where her parents were. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm literally going in faith that something will happen. Now, I remember on my way over there, I had told her a preliminary number that, hey, you know, the wedding's going to cost you about $1,800. That's what I had in my mind to charge her. That's what I had written out in the contract. And so my goal was to obviously go me with her parents, who I believe they were going to be once paying for, and her, her dad was a dentist, and I need to go over the details with him, make sure he's okay with it, make sure we're all on the same page. And I said, I remember asking God, I said, God, if I can just have them pay half of this, $900, that will last me easily till next week. So I was going there for two main things. One, I needed to get paid something some type of deposit, and then two, we need to get this thing written and signed. Well, when we got there, you know, I, I have such great respect for Dr. George, such a, and then his wife, Peggy George, just two incredibly sweet people. I love being around them growing up, and now I get have the honor to take wedding pictures um, of their daughter. And I was really pleased that they that they trust me. Again, I, I hadn't been really that long doing photography. But to the average person, they'll really choose anybody. They'll choose the ones that they trust. And they trusted me. And I knew I was going to do good work. I wasn't, I wasn't um, fearful of that. I, even though this would be my biggest wedding that I've done up to this point, um, I knew I, I had all the skills to do it. And I was looking forward to the to the challenge of it. Because some of the details in this wedding is it was going to be at a Baptist church, the actual ceremony, and then the after party was going to be at a cabin on a golf course somewhere in Knoxville. So I remember getting there, arriving, and we start talking and chatting, and, you know, I start kind of going over the details and stuff, and you know, comes the time, we've been there about an hour, enjoying each other, telling, I'm kind of explaining all the things that will happen at the wedding, where I need to be, where they need to be. And then Dr. George finally asked me the question. He says, well, Mario, let me ask you this. What, when, when do you think I need to pay um, for what you're asking? And I said, well, you know, um, you know, we're about two and a half months away, three months away. So, you know, uh, obviously some type of deposit, you know, would be fair, you know, because I am in faith, you know, assuming that you are going to use me and my services and should anything arise, you know, I need to be compensated because that weekend I could technically book for something else that I'm not going to. I want to give you all my word that I'm going to be there. And I remember I said, well, you know, if you could you know, I think what would be fair if you're able to pay half of it today, 
And you can pay the other half, you know, right before the wedding or even on the day of the wedding if you want to just slip me a check. Uh, I trust you all. I trust you all. That I had, I had a lot of trust in them. And he says, okay, I, I think that's fair. But you know what? There's one thing I don't like about this. And in my mind, phew, heart drops. And I said, okay, uh, well, what, was, what, what, what do you not like about it? He goes, well, you know, do you really think six hours is, is going to be enough time? for us to, uh, for you to do what you, you need to do, you know, take the photos and stuff, because I really don't know how long we're going to be there at that cabin. And, and that's really just my concern. Um, let me ask you this. What would you charge me if, if I, you know, hired you for three more hours and just make sure that you have full day coverage? Well, I wasn't prepared for that question. I started thinking on it. I said, well, you know, I think, uh, I think right now, um, you know, Two hundred dollars an hour. After that, so two hundred two hundred dollars times three six hundred dollars would would be fair, and so that would you know bring it up to twenty four hundred. And you know what do you think about that? And he, so so I mem- I could remember I remember seeing the the wheels spin in his in his mind, and he's like, okay, okay, well yeah, I think I'd like that. I think I would. I I, I want to hire you for for those three more hours. So let's 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 scrub this out in this contract and let's let's make it twenty four hundred and um, hey Peggy and he's talking to his wife, can you grab me my checkbook? Um, uh, one thing I want to do here today with you, Mario, you know, uh, I could pay half right now, but you know, I just rather pay for the whole thing. So uh, Peggy, go grab my checkbook and let's let's pay this man today because I, I don't want to worry about this. I've got other costs that are coming up on this wedding. And I just want to make sure this gets done, deal. I, I I know I've got your word, and you know we got this contract here. So yeah, go ahead and do that. What? I'm literally thinking in my mind, like God, did you answer my prayer to today? No way. Are, I'm just like mind blown. I, I I can't even can't even comprehend what I was feeling in the moment. Now in the moment. I had to play cool, calm, and collective. I had to be like, yeah, hey, you know what, Dr. George, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, you don't want to worry about this anymore. You know, let's go and get this paid for. I just want to ask you that, you know, if I deposit this check, are the funds good? He says, absolutely. You can deposit that tomorrow. No problem. The funds are there. I said, great. So in my mind, I'm like panicking and excited at the same time, but at the same time, I, on the outside, I got to play calm, cool, and collective and just act like this is just another deal I'm closing. So he writes me the check in the amount of $2,400, and I remember in that moment thinking, wow, this is crazy. No way, dude. Is this happening? So I remember... You know, we wrapped things up. We get everything signed. It was getting pretty late. It was about 10 o'clock. And I said, hey, you know what? Uh, I've got work here in about five hours. I still got to get home and rest. And uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for trusting me. And I can't wait to be the photographer on this very special day for your daughter. And I said, hey, I hope you have a great day. And we'll see you then. If we don't, if we don't, see, if we don't see you then, we will see you then. And... I remember getting inside my car and just almost fainting, like emotions were just coming over me. And in that moment, I just thought of the the verses just started coming to me and just just saying, test me in this, test me in this and watch that I just won't open up the flood, the, the I won't open up the heavens. So and pour out a blessing upon you that you may not have enough room in your barn houses. I started thinking on that. And I started thinking about all the years up till that point where I was faithful in my giving. And I made sure I was always faithful to God to just give him what I believe he he deserved. And I mean he deserves all of it, right? But he's only request he's only asking for ten percent. And I, I I became so habitual to that. I had no problem with that. And I remember thinking in that moment said, wow, God, you really do provide. I had $26.50 when I walked in that home. 
with half a tank of gas, and I just drove an hour to get there, not knowing if I'll even be able to have enough, if I'll have enough gas to even get back home that night. And God provided $2,400 is what I walked out with that night. What? What? Like, this is the moment that we say, but God, only God is the only thing I can think of. It's the only thing I can think of in that moment. When in the moment of my desperation, I cried out unto him and said, Lord, provide for me. And the other verse I started thinking of in that moment is when Jesus starts talking about the the birds. He says, do you see these birds? Do they work? But yet they still have a home. Do they work? No, but they still eat. So if your Heavenly Father can provide the basic needs for these birds who don't work but yet have food to eat and a place to sleep, how much more will your Heavenly Father take care of you, His highest creation? And in that moment, I just know it was the faithfulness of my giving that in the moment that I absolutely need it, God showed up. God showed up and provided, all, over-provided all my needs. And I'm so blessed that that happened. And, and, and I have other testimonies that are very similar. And in this one, yes, I am talking about an, an, a monetarily blessing. But there are the blessings that I, that I will share with you where God helped, probably avoided me, probably helped me avoid a situation, danger, peace I needed, love I needed, gentleness, kindness, faith I needed in those moments. And I do believe that that discipline that, that I developed and that you can develop too, again, if only, this, only the Holy Spirit can reveal this to you, but it was because of those times that I gave or maybe I didn't have a lot, or maybe it was a questionable financial decision for me to make that I said, you know what? I do believe God is going to still provide. God is going to still provide. And this is just a testimony that I never get tired of sharing to have nothing and walk out with an abundance, abundance of And I say all this, and I don't want anyone to misinterpret me and think that, well, because I've been giving, I must be living a good life. I'm not rich by any means, but my wife and I are living and getting all the basic needs that we we need every single day, every single month, year after year. We have a home that we get to stay in. We have beds that we get to rest on at night. We have food always in our belly. We've never lacked anything. And I just, I just always go back. And again, uh, all these testimonies just jog other Bible verses that I've read. And in Ecclesiastes, the author says, Lord, provide for me enough in the day so that I may not get angry and curse you for not providing, but don't over-provide for me so that I might forget you. That's basically saying, God, just provide what I need and let me be happy with that. And I've been so blessed and so happy that God has always provided for me. And, and, and financial stresses that, that, that I have gone through by myself as a single guy and now being married. But God, I can, I can confidently say God has provided, and I, I believe I have 
the revelation that tithes and offering is still part of and still needed in the church. You may have a different opinion, and that's fine, but I just can't neglect what God's done in my life, and I will hold on to those, those testimonies till I die. And there's really nothing more to say. You can't take away a testimony. You can't take away a testimony. So I hope this episode has been encouraging to someone. Uh, obviously, for my English audience, thank you for now being here for the first time. And hopefully you um, all understand this. And, you know, if this has touched your heart, if you believe this could help someone else's faith, share this on your social media, share this with a friend, coworker, and all I can say is, is God will always provide if, if you put your faith in Him. And, you know, maybe this is a sign that maybe you should start tithing and, and see what God can do with just a little bit. I believe every time we tithe, God takes that and multiplies that in the, in the natural world and in the supernatural world. Um, and things we just can't explain, we just give it to God, and we give Him, and I share this testimony, not that I get any of the glory or that I'm a great person for tithing, but I give God all the honor and the glory that He's allowed me to go through that situation and for me to come out stronger in my faith knowing that that I was, even though I couldn't see the blessing coming, the blessing was always there. And I really thank God for that. So thank you all for listening to this podcast, Testimonios Escondidos. My name is Mario. I hope you all are blessed. And if you enjoyed this episode, comment down below, share this again. You know what to do. Thank you all. God bless. Bye-bye.